What's up, Hoopers? LA is home of some of the biggest stars in the entire world. One of those newest stars, the most searched man on planet Earth, your boy Matt Ryan. And I'm not talking about the quarterback. We're talking about a dude who was digging up graves just a couple years ago, making $10 an hour driving for DoorDash. How did a man that went working from a cemetery, not get drafted out of college, play for multiple colleges, make 10 bucks an hour to now making $1,637,699 bucks? All from hitting this shot. This three point country, it's to Ryan. Now, it wasn't just that shot. It was what he did in the preseason. But before we talk about if Matt Ryan is the Lakers' new best sniper or laser, as LeBron James calls it, we got to look into this dude's past because there are some crazy stories. And there's zero reason that he should be on an NBA team right now. Now, the Lakers were in a 1-6 situation, about to go 1-7. With 1.3 seconds left on the clock, Coach Darvin Ham draws up a beautiful play. Wait, not for LeBron James or Anthony Davis. For who? Matty Ice? Oh, wait, that's the quarterback. Matt Ryan. They needed an absolute miracle, and by shooting 25% from behind the arc this season in seven games, they had to rely on one player. That was Matt Ryan. They set up a play, a backdoor screen for him to catch it in the corner, and not one, but two NBA white guys made the play. Because Austin Reeves is the best inbounding player for the Los Angeles Lakers. And he threw a beautiful pass to the corner for a Matt Ryan bucket. But where did Matt Ryan come from? Matt Ryan began his college career as a parade All-American. That's just about the only normal thing for his rise to the NBA fame. But a 6'6 forward out of New Rochelle, New York, Ryan initially attended Notre Dame. Now, he played 72 games for Notre Dame, and then he transferred, but he never averaged double digits in his college career. But that had him move over to Vanderbilt so that he could get more playing time. But that didn't happen. Craziest story. His coach ended up getting fired, and guess who took over? Jerry Stackhouse. And Jerry Stackhouse didn't play your guy. So, Matt Ryan left again. And that made him finish his career for Chattanooga. Now, like mentioned before, nothing stands out about his college career. This is not a dude who should have been drafted. In fact, he was not drafted. He never even averaged double-digit scoring, and he shot 37% from behind the arc. So this three-point sniper and laser that the Lakers have seen, not only in the regular season, but in the preseason, was really a nobody coming out of college. And that basically left him looking like most collegiate athletes, where they just play four years, and then they got to go find a job. Kind of like me, your NBA white guy. But that's not what happened. Matt Ryan predictably went undrafted in 2020. He decided against using his Vanderbilt economics degree to get a desk job, and instead he worked as a landscaper for St. Joseph's Cemetery in New York. And not only did he work for a cemetery, they didn't pay him enough money, so that's when he got a gig at DoorDash. You need to comment down below if old Matt Ryan ever delivered you some Chick-fil-A. But this dude was living from couch to couch, working job to job to just try and live. He did not want to go get a desk job, and he believed in his talents. But that unfortunately led him high and dry because no other NBA teams did believe in his talent. And then what would happen that would actually make his career even worse? COVID hit. For two years, this guy had to go work at a cemetery, not only digging up sprinklers, but digging up graves. He worked from time to time again from DoorDash to make extra money, and for two years, never even heard the phone ring one time from an NBA team until 2021 when the Cleveland Cavaliers gave your boy Matt Ryan a chance. And now that is how his NBA journey got started. Crazy enough, the Cleveland Cavaliers signed him. He played four games. He was a walking bucket. He averaged 26.5 points a game from 48% shooting from behind the arc. That is super wet. But to add insult to injury, your boy didn't even get signed. Cleveland said, get out of here. 
And that led the Denver Nuggets taking a chance on your boy Matt Ryan. Now, Matt Ryan went over to the Nuggets, played a bunch of G League for them. He actually played in quite a few games, but it was just a little bit of a management role. He played about 10 minutes a game, averaging 12 points. They didn't truly believe in Matt Ryan. And so this really had his skepticism and his mindset thinking, I don't know if I can make an NBA team. But he didn't give up. Because there was one NBA team out there that saw his talent and decided to roll the dice. You will never guess who he played for. He actually played for the Boston Celtics. Now the craziest part about the Matt Ryan contract is when he went to the Boston Celtics, he actually couldn't legally play in the playoffs. So he was on the bench with that Celtics team. I didn't even know that. The one thing about Matt Ryan though, he got his TV debut. Now he only played five minutes that entire season, but if you remember, one of the greatest finishing shots was your boy Jason Tatum doing the spin around finger roll layup to win the game in the playoffs. Who was the first person to run out and hug him? That was Matt Ryan. So Matt Ryan might know a thing or two about winning a game because he learned it from Jason Tatum. So how the heck did this player who got drafted by the Cleveland Cavaliers, dumped, then picked up by the Nuggets, dumped, then picked up by the Celtics and not played, get to the Los Angeles Lakers, the purple and gold? Well, here's the story. He was not even an afterthought for the Lakers. In fact, when they went into the preseason and were playing all those games, he didn't even get his own press conference. They literally forgot to press conference this guy. So this is about the same time he came in with Dwayne Bacon. Now, the Lakers really had no thoughts of signing either one of these players. They were just kind of bringing him in to, to try him out. And you saw it with Dwayne Bacon. He was in and he was out. Now, with non-guaranteed contracts, they basically were bringing old Matt Ryan in to be a body, to be somebody in practice. Now, I've played some hoops myself, and actually having a B-string player like this in practice who can shoot from anywhere is great practice for your team. So, their whole goal was just bringing him in, sending him down to the G League like every other NBA team. But then something happened. Rob Palinka, who is notorious for having non-guaranteed contracts in the offseason, especially so that he has a little bit more flexibility when it comes to the actual start of the season, can drop players. Now, this was what they expected to do, and they were going to have a tryout through the preseason with guys like Matt Ryan, with guys like Avery Bradley, with guys like Cole Swider, a dude who actually lit it up in college for Syracuse, a six foot nine body who had everybody talking because of his G League days. Now is when the emergence of Matt Ryan started happening. There was one more spot left for the Los Angeles Lakers. Now, going into the preseason, it was all but sealed up for Cole Swider. They basically told him, you're our guy. Well, then the preseason happened, and Cole Swider went out there and shot a measly 23% from behind the arc. Now, I do believe this is a guy who could still make a team. Six foot nine, can shoot it, not afraid to shoot it. But Matt Ryan, who really didn't impress even that much more, still shot at almost 36 from behind the arc. And if you remember what I saw, and I saw what you saw, we all saw the same thing. He went six for nine in a preseason game, truly putting Matt Ryan on the map. And if he did not have that one game where he made six threes, and you got to think about the immense pressure. The amount of pressure you have now put in four years of work to try and just make an NBA roster, and it boils down to a preseason. I couldn't imagine what he was thinking. And the boy gets wet. That game right there solidified his chances and got him a contract worth upwards of $1.7 million. We started from the bottom, now we're here. Yeah, he's not door dashing anymore. Now, Matt Ryan's starting to get a little bit more minutes per game. He's starting to be seen in the Lakers uniform out there on the court a little bit more. And the guy's got to work on his defense a little bit. But entering the Wednesday before the Pelicans game with only 50 minutes of playing time, which a full game is 48, he's not getting the minutes. Matt Ryan has sunk six out of 11 three-pointers. And obviously what we saw with the Pelicans, he's got that clutch gene. So this is a guy who they believe in who can shoot the ball. This is a guy they believe in who can come in and give a good 12, 15, 20 minutes and stretch the floor. And with the new offense running with LeBron James as the point guard, and then when he sits Russell Westbrook as the point guard, you're going to find time for this guy to come in and get his shot. Now, when asked after the game how you felt about shooting, he said, shoot or shoot. My confidence is unwavering. I don't care what the game is. 
I'm going to shoot. And that's the one thing that I've noticed with Matt Ryan. Whenever he catches that ball or even before he catches it, he's got those hands ready. He's just ready to pop that ball. Now, he also said, I feel like LeBron James. Now, you might be taking a little bit farther, Mr. Matt Ryan. You're not quite the King Goat James yet, but you are a great NBA white guy. And so am I. And if you're loving my kind of videos, then the only thing I ask from you guys is that you dunk that like button right now. Please do your NBA white guy a favor and hit the like button. And make sure you subscribe so that you never miss any of my videos. But you will never believe the story that I break down in this video right here. You gotta click on that video. Hey, hit the subscribe button so that you never miss a video. And until my next video, Hoopers, we'll catch you later.